Praise the Lord. Welcome to the Apostolic Revival Tabernacle Bible Study. Let everybody join in. See who joins us live. If you're coming live, why don't you go ahead and give me an amen. I see... Uh, see you there brother Ross sister Ross sister Ray and there's Sherry praise the Lord and mother praise the Lord how are you <clears throat> gonna give everybody a, a moment here to to sign on and get ready for Bible study praise the Lord sister Stringer Brother and Sister Pruitt, God bless you, man. I haven't seen you all in so long. I kind of feel like I'm living all by myself. I've got one end of the house, and Sister Romine's got the other end of the house. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <clears throat> well, it's good to have all that are with us, and maybe there's some with you, uh, watching uh, we'll just start tonight with some prayer want to remember brother Cowan talk to him Sunday he's doing well he's kind of spending some time with his his son uh, but uh, yeah, hopefully he's he's wanting to join us for uh, service we're gonna have uh, service this coming Sunday from the church uh, and there'll only be about five of us there, Brother Lopez, and I think the Rosses are going to join us, and then Brother <clears throat> Cowan's going to be there so he can be in a service. And uh, so we'll start that at 12 o'clock this coming Sunday. Lord's willing. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, Sister Lily. Good to see and have you with us. If you have a special need or special request, uh, just make it known to the Lord. And uh, we'll pray that God would have his way. And uh, I won't be too long here this evening, I promise. But I do have a thought from the Lord and just want to give you an encouraging word and, and try to uplift you a little bit and, uh, and, and allow the Lord to minister. Let's pray together. Lord, we thank you for this evening. Lord, I'm thankful that we have some friends that can gather together via media, Lord, but we're together in spirit, Lord, and we pray that your spirit would just move and have its way, touch our hearts, our minds, you know, the special needs, the special request. I pray for them, Lord, that you would touch, that you would anoint. Lord, you see us in this time of the coronavirus, Lord. We pray that you would just have your way, Lord, that you would move, allow your hand of protection to be around your people here this evening, Lord, and throughout this topsy-turvy time, Lord, I pray that your spirit would minister and, and move in our hearts and minds. Lord, I pray that you would move upon this word that you've given to me, that you would anoint it, and Lord, I pray that you would stir the heart and the mind. In Jesus' name, we pray. Everybody said amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, yeah, yes, I'm sorry, Sister Romine. Remember the, the Gill family, and we certainly welcome Nolan. Praise the Lord. Um, and then all of our scheduled events uh, have been canceled for this coming month, uh, but we will uh, try to have some service and time of celebration on Easter Sunday also, so... I guess for the time being, Facebook Live's all you get to see me by. So um, for the next few moments, if you grab your Bibles, um, I'm not going to put it up there. You're going to have to look it up the old-fashioned way. We're going to turn to uh, 1 Peter chapter 2, and I'm going to read verse 9 and 10. 1 Peter chapter 2. And 9 and 10, praise the Lord. 
But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, which in times past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. My thought this evening, we are still the chosen people. Even though uh, we're going through what we're going through now, we need to remember that we are his. We are the sheep of his pasture. He is our shepherd. So it's who we are. That's, that's kind of my thought this evening is it's who we are. We are the chosen generation. We are a royal priesthood. We are God's incarnate and flesh and, and, and his spirit dwells within us. So it seems to be when we get out of our routine, I, I don't know how many of you have this routine. I, I certainly have uh, some routines myself and I have not been able to be a part of those routines uh, for the last couple of weeks. And so you get uh, sort of chaotic in your lifestyle. It just, it's like there's uh, time really just kind of doesn't really mean anything. <laughs> uh, you just kind of get up and go about your day, especially if you, you're quarantined and you're in the house and, and uh, you can read, you can study for me and you can but sometimes it just, it's like time stands still, time goes by quickly. It just, there is, just seems like there's no routine. And so in that, we get a little frustrated. And in those frustrations, I believe we need to remind ourselves who we really are and who we are serving. And we're serving a mighty God that loves us and knows exactly what we're going through. I I thought today I got a, a, uh, uh, a uh, thought on my, or a, uh, I'm sorry, it's lost me, a alert, excuse me, on my phone this morning about an earthquake that happened uh, up in the northwest part of the country. And just a week ago, there was one in Salt Lake City. And I just began to think of the signs of the times. And of course, today our president began to uh, give us information on uh, his uh, not only war on the, the virus, but the uh, military being in action for uh, the drug cartels that are coming into the country. And then Iran having uh, their issues and wanting to, to attack. And I begin to really think, wow, talk about changing of routines and things really turning around. What a time to have such an issue as what we have to really captivate everybody into what's going on around the world today and it changes us and so in those changes we got to remember who we are even though our routine will possibly never be the same again and we'll probably god's will we'll get into another form or fashion of a routine and and go about our way we got to remember who we actually are and we are a royal priesthood a chosen generation we weren't the first to believe that. As, as I began to read the passage of Scripture and I began to take into account what, what Peter was saying in the first part of this uh, chapter, he began to explain laying aside all the malice and all the guile and all the hypocrisies and envies and all the evil speakings. And he says, As newborn babes desire sincere milk of the word that you might grow, that you can taste to see that the Lord is gracious. Remember who you are because as a newborn man, we need to grow in what God has given to us. This is just an element of our growing pattern in our life. Didn't the Lord say in his word, all these things would come about? He's already forewarned us, but aren't you thankful that we have his spirit to walk and lead us and to guide us? Surely he knows exactly where we're at. And he knows the need of our hearts and our minds. So, Tonight, I want to remind you to remember who you are. You are a, cho a, a royal priesthood, a chosen generation. We are living in the time and the hour that God has chosen for us. And sometimes we forget 
about the voice that we're hearing. Uh, those that are chosen uh, just simply hear a call. Uh, I know there's questions, how, how do I be a chosen individual? How do I get to be that chosen part? How does how, how that happen? Do you hear the call of the master? As these trying times begin to plague our society and even plague our homes, who's calling your name? I know who's calling my heart and my heart's panning after the, the water brook. I'm panning after the Lord. I'm, I'm putting my faith and my trust in him because I know that he cares and understands where I'm at. In fact, in Acts chapter 13, verse 44, Paul uh, and Barnabas was there uh, teaching and preaching in the synagogues. And they was trying to preach the gospel. They was preaching the gospel to the Jews first. And so they was receiving it and they was allowing uh, the spirit to move upon them. But then God gave a call that I, to Paul and said, I want you to go and preach a little further. I want you to meet with the Gentiles. And in verse 44, the Jews begin to see that it wasn't just for them that was chosen. It was for the entire world. And so they got a little jealous and began to have a little persecution against Paul. I say this, that even though the persecutions may be coming on us on every side, we are still a chosen generation. It doesn't matter who says that your, your God's not real or, or you're not a true Christian or Jesus isn't God. It doesn't matter. All you got to do is live the toast testimony of who Jesus is to you and what he's done for you because he's chosen us and we're hearing uh, that mosaic call to our, of our lives from him. He's, he's given us that liberty, that freedom, that we can live in this world full of fear, full of dread, full of things coming. We can live in peace though. Why? Because he's chosen us to be that testimony. So today we need to be the testimony for those around. I know you hear it all the time in the media and, and the phone calls that I get uh, constantly. And, and you got to soothe the fear of individuals and, and you got to remind everybody who we are. So I guess uh, what, I'm, what I'm saying here today is we need to understand who we are and who we're serving. In fact, Peter would begin to go on and begin to teach uh, those that Jesus is the cornerstone. He is the foundation of our faith. He is the rock in which we can stand on. And in fact, uh, he would begin to uh, call uh, on, on those to remember Israel as the chosen people and, and how they knew him. And uh, they were known as priests, the kingdom of priests. And, and Israel was also known as a holy nation. And they was also known as royal people and a peculiar people. And then Peter begins to give the call, but now you are that chosen generation. It's not just for the Jew, but it's for the entire world. It's for everybody. Could I tell you that it's just not for the Christian today? It's, it's just not for the saint today. But if you're listening to the sound of my voice and, and you're wondering if that call is for you, I, I don't know who Jesus is. I, I've never been born of the water and of the spirit. Could I tell you it's for you today? You are hearing the call of the master that's saying, let me take all that you have, all your cares, all your fears, and put it at my altar and allow me to baptize you with my spirit. Allow my name to be applied to your life. Allow uh, me to walk with you. Allow me to guide you and care for you and to love you. You are called if you're hearing the voice of the Lord today. You are chosen just by simply answering the call of our master. Praise the Lord. And so, Paul, I can only uh, think that as he began to look in the eyes of those Gentiles that day and they had questions, well, the Jews say it's not for us. And Paul said, well, I wanna give you a little story. I want you to remember something, how that they feared me and how, how I walked that road to Damascus thinking that I was doing what was right for God. And then all of a sudden something happened. You know, don't make God shine a bright light in your life, stopping everything in your life before you answer the call. That tug in your heart that you feel right now is 
possibly a conviction of your heart. And the Lord's saying, why don't you lay down the malice, the envy, the guile, the things that are hindering you right now. Why don't you pick up my love, my, my, my heart, my, my walk? Why don't you love me? Why don't you allow me to wrap my arms around you? Allow me to change your destination. And Paul gave it to those that day. And my destination was changed when I was able to come and contact and understand who Jesus really was. So who is Jesus in your life? What has Jesus done for you? Has Jesus been able to save your soul, to minister to your heart and to your mind? In fact, uh, Peter would go on to say in, in uh, chapter uh, two here that being a chosen of the chosen priesthood and, and building upon those foundations, we may seem like strangers and pilgrims, but we do have a hope. And he says, changing our lives is allowing Jesus to come in and minister and to move and to give us that hope. So tonight, as we're about to close in prayer, I pray this has been an upliftment for you to realize who you are and allow Jesus to just move into your homes, give you that lively hope, that joy, that satisfaction of knowing that uh, salvation is yours and it's yours tonight. I wonder as we take a moment here, if you just close your eyes and allow me to say a, bless, a blessing for you as we're about to close here. Lord, I thank you for this evening, this time of your word and opening up to you and reminding us of who we are. We're chosen of you. We're called of you. Lord, I pray as those that would listen here this evening would hear your voice, hear your call, allow you to minister to them right now. Pray your sweet spirit to surround them, Lord. Even in these hours that seem so trying and harsh, I pray that you would move and liberate the soul, that you would allow them to rest. I pray your hand of protection around about them, even though maybe in the next day to, to, to two or three weeks, maybe getting a little more scary, Allow us to remember, God, that we are a chosen priesthood. We are a chosen generation. We are a chosen people. And we're called by your name. I pray that you would watch over us, lead us and guide us in your hand, and bring us back together again someday soon to worship together. In Jesus' name, we pray. Well, God bless you. Um, I want to remember. Mind you that we will be doing Facebook Live from the church uh, next Sunday, 12 o'clock. So join us and let's have a time of worship and praise. Until, uh, we, until that time, let's pray for one another, give each other a cause, keep up with everybody. Thank you so much for joining in. God bless you and have a good night. Love you all.